That's a wild ball that made the mistake of coming too close to Paul Childerly. Good skills. We're back in the UK for a South of England McNabb. It's the McDougal. We've got news, we've got hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. You can't help but get butterflies before heading off into a German forest with some well-appointed high seats. Will it be your day or your neighbours? Will it be boar, mouflon, roe or red? There's plenty to get excited about and to get us really in the mood we have some of that wonderful German tradition. Presenting the UK on this international media hunt is professional deer stalker Paul Childerly. David is to join him on his high seat, whereas I am on my lonesome. Traditionally, I find I repel animals, not attract them, but today could be different. Then, just as Paul predicts, a boar comes mooching through the undergrowth. Paul shoots. It's a fantastic start. Yes. That's exciting. A few minutes later, the dogs arrive. They were on the boar's scent trail. Paul replenishes his blood sugar with a Mars bar. Very seductive, not. We can hear the drive in full swing now and the beaters are not far off. They're in the trees behind the slope. Then over the brow comes a second boar. But Paul does not make contact. He had to make sure the shot was safe. At the end of the ride, the boar darts across. He's unlucky again. Missed it, David. Do you go on camera or not? Yeah. That's a good day. Shows you can't kill them all. <laughs> I am well and truly kicking myself for that last ball. He came over the ridge and I, and I had to wait. I had to wait for him to come uh, over the ridge to make him safe. And because uh, I give it that little bit extra time, I broke my swing and I just, I uh, know I missed him. As soon as I pulled the trigger, I missed him. Ah. But that's a good thing. That's, what, that's all, of the, all about it. If you shot them all, it wouldn't be good fun. It's, it's the challenge of, of getting one, missing one, kicking yourself because you missed it, and on to the next. Let's do this. Oh, oh. 
The dogs and beaters are busy around us and this time a roe deer doubles back and through the trees. This time there's too much cover. It's been a really exciting drive and we've seen some animals. Meanwhile, on the other side of the forest, I'm not having so much, well, let's call it luck. That's me just pretending, obviously. Now we are here to use some of the finest hunting kit available. So let's have a look at this rifle, very modern, the Blaser R8 Professional Success. It has a metal barrel that goes bang in an appropriate manner and a composite stock so strong you can have a thumb hole. But it also has leather inlays like a, a Bentley or very luxurious luggage. Luxury luggage, sir? No, it's a rifle. It's fine. I mean, one would have been nice. Just a fox, perhaps. The scope, well, this is the Woodland and Driven Hunting Scope par excellence, 1.128 to 8 by 30. It's part of the Victory V8 range, which goes right up to a 60 millimeter objective lens. Ladies, that is very large indeed. This for driven hunting, well, I haven't had the chance to use it. So let's ask Paul. So it's a 1.1 by 8. And uh, practically, in my experience, it's great for driven hunting with the lower powers, but also with the 8 power you can still use it for high seat work, stalking, great for row stalking. It's nice and, you know, it's a big scope, but it's still lightweight, which is good. And the clarity is good, good field of view, brilliant. That's what I do like about it. Yeah, very pleased with it so far. Yeah, I'd use this, this scope for stalking. I'd be comfortable shooting 850 yards easy with this scope. Perfect woodland stalk, stalking scope as well. Off the sticks, it's very steady. Yeah, good all round scope, really. At the end of the drive, we have our boar. Plus, we've been asked by the beaters to tell our guides that there's another boar on top of the ridge. A great, great morning. Um, been here for three hours and we've uh, managed to get this one in the bag. Um, shame about the other one, but that's perfect. Been great. Highs and lows and, and uh, the excitement of, of a driven hunt. Got myself a nice boar. Very happy man. After the hunt is the follow-up, which is superbly efficient. It's not just every animal that is accounted for, it's every shot. I am with Reiner and Marcus, the follow-up team on a stand where a shooter says he had a go at a boar. The helmet is for crashing through the Christmas tree plantations in pursuit of boar. The radio collar is for tracking Fiona, the four-and-a-half-year-old Hanoverian hound, who will be doing most of the work. Even when Reiner commands her to blibe or stay, that nose is working. We um, uh, wild boars, two we control. Uh, uh. Somewhere has shoot of the wild boar and we look at is ill or okay. Well, ill is a delicate way of putting it. Fiona's behavior tells us there is no sign this animal is injured. He has shown me uh, first the way where the wild boar is uh, go, walk, and uh, he is not interested. Uh, I think she is uh, not ill. But something happened. This scuffed branch is a clear sign that the boar went this way, straight into a dark wood. Reiner wants to make sure, so we follow the trail. On the other side, we see what happened. This is forensic tracking. The boar went through the forest, and the shooter in this high seat successfully killed it. It's fallen down on this place. Okay, okay, okay. okay. But was, was this a different wild boar? This is the same. Same wild boar. It's the same wild boar. So she runs through there. Yeah, she runs from first yeah. to the second, and the second has luck. Back at that first stand, there is a second animal, but it looks like a clean miss. The red and white tape shows where the shot went. There is no obvious sign, and Fiona is not that interested. Then something gets her attention. She sets off with Reiner after her and takes him up to a deer that someone else has shot. It has already been marked and gralicked. In the end, all animals and all shots are carefully accounted for. Even though I didn't fire one of them, others did. Paul's neighbour, an American journalist, had a row and a boar, and in total we all accounted for 67 animals, most of them wild boar. And one day, one of them will be mine. Well, well done, Paul. And kind of well done me for maintaining my 100% record. That film was sponsored by Shooter King, which kept us both warm and dry. So from a wet weekend in Germany to a wet blanket, it's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump.
This is Field Sports Channel News. Film star Kurt Russell has spoken out in favour of guns. The actor told Hollywood reporter Jeffrey Wells exactly what he thought of gun control as a way of curbing terrorist attacks. If you think gun control or something like that is going to change a terrorist point of view, I think you're like out of your mind. I think you're like, I think anybody is. I think, I think it's absolutely insane. A 16-year-old shooter has won a car. Despite not being able to drive, Tom Scott has won the school's challenge 10th anniversary top prize, a Vauxhall Corsa from car dealership Stratstone. I can't explain how much, much, how happy I am. Yeah, it's, it's great, it's great. It's been a fantastic day, it's been a fantastic year. Um, so it's just great end of the year, really. A New Zealand reporter who tried to expose criminals who bought weapons illegally via mail order has had a visit from the police. TV3 journalist Heather Duplessis Allen bought a tutu rimfire on the internet to show how easy it is for criminals to buy the guns. However, the story has backfired. She was unable to point to an instance where a gun had been gained illegitimately through the mail order system, and the police are now investigating her for acquiring the gun. A Leicestershire hunt can once again hold its traditional Boxing Day meet in the town of Oakham. There was such an outcry when Oakham Town Council ruled that the hunt could not meet in Cuts Close, where they've gone for 80 years, that it's made available a car park opposite the Rutland County Museum. You can still sign a petition to support the South Down and Eridges Boxing Day meet on Lewis High Street at bit.ly forward slash hunt meet. And finally, Brian May has gone hunting. The national treasure and badger lover said more must be done to educate people about what he calls the brutality of hunting animals for sport as he attended a cruelty-free hunt in West Wales. He went to the three counties' bloodhounds meet near Swansea. Brian declined to ride to hounds, explaining that he could not ride due to growing up in a poor background. He added that his kids have learned to ride. You are now to date with Field Sports Random Location News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, something Jamie Chandler, the shooter with no hands, is going to find tricky. He's shooting a cock pheasant, tying a fly and catching a trout with it. It is the McDougal Challenge. Jamie Chandler was brought up in a shooting family. To celebrate his brother Rob's 40th birthday, he has decided, along with his younger brother Matt, to treat him to the McDougal. The McDougal is a gentle but incredibly enjoyable sporting challenge dreamt up by Douglas Chalmers in Sussex. It involves shooting a cock bird, creating a fly with feathers from that bird, then catching a trout. Now, this will of course require some degree of dexterity, something that's not at the top of Jamie's can-do list. But that's Jamie. <laughs> the first drive sees the man in action and out of the sun comes a pheasant with Jamie's name on it. Helped out a oh, little by yes. his brother on the next peg, he's off the oh, mark. Out. <laughs> this is not a big bag shoot. It's just done well. Hey, hey, hey! Dad's... Yeah, shoot captain, one of his best mates, was also involved in shooting. Um, and yeah, back then it wasn't all about massive days and who's got the biggest car and all that nonsense. It was much more just about getting out in the countryside and enjoying it. Um, but yeah, it's just fantastic, really. In fact, these are Dad's guns. We have mentioned Jamie's father's pair of AYA side-by-sides before. Jamie struggles to shoot them, so his brothers are using them today. The, uh, I used to stand on the peg with Dad and send Rob and Jamie up around, uh, around the fields to pick the pheasants for us. Not quite <laughs> oddly how I remember it. I remember you as a five-year-old standing there in your little red jacket shivering, complaining <laughs> about the cold, while Rob and I were off doing man stuff. So. <laughs> With a couple more drives complete, everyone has their cockbird. So far, so good. So what makes the McDougal so special? People, uh, although still go on big shoots, they quite like the, 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 the variance on having a challenge and being able to do something rather than just bringing down an endless bird. But uh, we do our best in that. We, we tend to shoot just um, November and December, the Saturdays during those two months, although this year we did start at the end of October. And the reason principally for that is not because of the game shooting, but because 
uh, of the fishing part of it, if you get into January or something, well, the lakes may be frozen, the fish are going to be less receptive to the fly. But that's the reason we try and keep it at eight. And, uh, one in five per people normally sort of get it. Um, <laughs> I'm being attacked by a dog. Um, but um, having said that, a few weeks ago, um, there were six boys who came down, and three of them uh, became McDougal's on that day. So you never know. Uh, and they fished very well, and a few of them had fished before. So um, it's, it's, it's about 20% there. I think ever since the, uh, the credit crunch or the austerity, or whatever you'd like to call it, you know, people are looking for field sports, but they're also looking for something that is of a reasonable price, which is an entertainment value. Uh, where they have a fun day out and if uh, part of the team get a uh, one or two parts of the challenge and they don't get the third the, the banter and the uh, camaraderie is wonderful to listen to we've had a great shoot this morning and um you know, if the weather holds we could uh, we could do well today hold on hold on <laughs> now we get on to the tricky bit, the tying of the flies. It's a tough ask, but all the guys manage it, although it's a bit of a team effort. Let's have a chat with Birthday Boy. What was it like growing up with Jamie? We grew up on a peg from very, very young, and then the minute we were old enough, we went beating, uh, and then uh, slowly got into to shooting. So Jamie and I started when we were about 14 with a 20 bore, and Matt started, and it's about nine years old with a bolt action 410 we bought for, uh, for him for his birthday. But nothing gets in Jamie's way, does it? Nah, nothing at all. That's why I get so much grief. <laughs> He's, he's claiming that he should be allowed some help, but the Dougal is uh, sorry. The, the, the McDougal is a uh, unassisted challenge, both shooting, fishing, and fly tying. So, uh, on his own. Yeah, absolutely. I've done some sea fishing in Australia. I've done some sea fishing here. I've done a little bit of course fishing, but definitely uh, I've never been fly fishing, so it should be quite entertaining. Uh, today has been an absolutely amazing day. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited. We're just about to go uh, trout fishing now. So uh, who knows? We're all still in the game to the lake and there are some different techniques on show and there is also lots of frustration. Then, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Harry Potter? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> <laughs> Sally Armour. Fishing isn't really a sport, is it? It's more like luck. You can't actually see anything to aim at it. Whereas uh, shooting is more elegance and style. This is just pure fluke. If you happen to hit a fish on the head, then bingo, you caught it. Ridiculous. The fish are there, but with the weather taking a turn for the worse, the team accept defeat. No one has achieved the coveted prize of a McDougal today, but it's always there next year. If you would like to attempt the McDougal, go to ashbournecountry.com. Bad luck, Jamie, but first bird of the day, well done. Now, from the south of England to the wider world of hunting and shooting on the internet, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Falkert Fern Hugevest sends me this film he made of a Kyla he shot in the Czech Republic. Notice that just like our own Paul Childerly, he puts two into it. Here is a similar idea from videoshaspesh.com. This requires a shot from the Merkel RX Helix and a knife. Greetings, distinguished Mr. Jacoby, says Le Jeu Chasse. I like him already. He recommends one of his films, Palom du Sud-Ouest, pigeon shooting in the southwest of France. Er, can you? Yuka Balas, sorry about the pronunciation, takes his first Bezoar Ibex in Turkey in this film, which celebrates sport in the high grey peaks. Andrew Jacob from Australia recommends this film for hunting YouTube. In it, Cheyenne River predator hunters are after coyotes in the USA. Staying stateside, Andrew Flair outdoors his goose shooting in Nebraska. He and friends set up layout blinds in a cornfield to wait for Canada's. It's definitely the US deer hunting season on YouTube. The American channels are flooded with white tails. Leatherwood outdoors has a 10-point buck killed in Pennsylvania with the 3040 crag. And finally, here is the first of a two parter about hunting whitetail with a muzzle loader. Jack on the Go Show is a vlogger who occasionally drifts into hunting. This film explains muzzle loader hunting well. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. 
Well, we are back next week. If you haven't done so already, please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to follow us on Facebook or like us on Twitter or the other way around, or even subscribe to us on YouTube or pop your email address into our constant contact box. We'll constantly contact you about our show. Field Sports Britain is at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday, and this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. Goodbye.